Welcome back. After refusing to reaffirm his commitment at the G7 summit, U.S. President Donald Trump will announce his decision on the Paris Accord most likely today. But amid reports of a possible pullout, leaders from Canada, China and the European countries have reaffirmed their commitment to the 2015 climate deal. So is Donald Trump, with his moves, pushing the United States towards global isolation? Here's a report. I'm hearing from a lot of people. Both ways. Both ways, believe me. I'm hearing from a lot of people both ways. In a matter of a few hours, U.S. President Donald Trump will end the suspense on his climate deal stance. But if one goes by American media reports, Trump is leaning toward withdrawing. America's imminent exit from the Paris deal sparked a sharp response from leaders across the globe. The EU, Canada and China have vowed to honour their commitments irrespective of America's position. The European Commission Chief Juncker said Trump cannot walk out even if he wants to. Also diese Vorstellung, ich bin Trump, ich bin Amerikaner, America first und ich mache mich jetzt von der Bildfläche, das wird nicht stattfinden. Das haben wir versucht in klaren deutschen Hauptsätzen, auch Herrn Trump in äh, äh, Taormina zu vermitteln. Wie es scheint, ist der Versuch nicht gelungen, aber Gesetz ist Gesetz und daran müssen sich... Äh, Einige Haute. Nicht alles, was Gesetz ist und nicht alles, was in internationalen Vereinbarungen steht, ist Fake News. Trump had slammed the accord during his presidential campaign, calling global warming a hoax manufactured by China to weaken manufacturing in the United States. But the man who led negotiators for the U.S. in Paris thinks walking away from the 2015 agreement will hurt both Trump and his country. I think it would be a very damaging thing for his legacy. Uh, I hope that he thinks twice about it. I hope that he listens to people on the other side. The Paris Accord was signed by 200 countries in 2015. The only two who refused to come on board were Syria and Nicaragua. Back then, the U.S. had committed to reducing its emissions by at least 26% by 2025. Exiting this deal could prove to be tricky and long drawn for Trump. but. Through budget cuts and a rollback of every climate regulation, the damage would have already been done. Bureau Report, Vion. And we're being joined by Richard M. Rosso, who is from the Center for Strategic and International Studies in Washington, and Chandra Bhushan, Deputy Director General, Center, Director General, Center for Science and Environment, with us from NOIDA. Good evening to both of you. Richard, let me come to you first. Is it a question of when rather than if now? Well, you know, the uh, word is that uh, 3 o'clock today, uh, we should hear the decision for what President Trump uh, wants to do, uh, looking at three different options, you know, either withdrawing from the agreement, uh, staying in the agreement, or uh, a third option could potentially be amending our contributions. Uh, I think as, uh, as has been noted already in the segment that um, you know, there's obviously legal questions over uh, whether we make alterations of any type there. Um, but uh, so far, I think uh, I've heard several legal opinions that there's some scope to, to move. Um, but at 3 o'clock today, that all eyes are on it. Right. Uh, Chandra Bhushan, the question then is who is advising Donald Trump because he's not appointed any scientific advisors. As, as one uh, editorial put it, there are no scientists in the government, which is why, quote unquote, America has lost its mind. Can I don't think even uh, if there would have been a scientist advising him, uh, he would have acted differently. Uh, the fact is uh, whether the U.S. remains within the Paris Agreement or leaves the Paris Agreement. Uh, in the past four months, uh, he, has a, he has already done a lot of damage. 
he has refused to pay. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, please, sure, go ahead. So uh, he has refused to pay to the UN Climate Fund, including Green Climate Fund. Uh, he has started uh, rolling back all the domestic climate action, including Green Power Plan. So with, with all these uh, actions of the past few months, uh, U.S. is not likely to meet its commitments under the uh, UNFCCC or, or the Paris Agreement. Richard Russo, most other countries, most other signatories have said that they will honor their commitments. How much does that help given the fact that America is the second biggest polluter? Well, uh, it helps. I mean, I think, um, I think when you look at countries like the United States and even China to some extent, uh, the most uh, emissions intensive part of our uh, growth phase uh, is most likely behind us. Uh, countries, you know, like India and Brazil where, um, you know, presuming that uh, all boats rise and development levels, you know, reach some sort of equivalence, um, you know, the major phase of emissions are ahead of uh, other countries like, like India and Brazil. So I, I do think that, um, you know, ultimately uh, how, how other countries that stay in uh, treat the commitments um, will ultimately probably be a, a bit more impactful, uh, you know, looking ahead uh, 30 and 40 years there. But, you know, the moral leadership that we, uh, we had attempted to, uh, to develop over the years uh, but also, a lot of American companies had uh, altered business models, creating new products, and we're hoping to take advantage of this, uh, not to the extent of China, perhaps, but still, uh, a lot of com companies are poised uh, to take advantage of this, uh, and, and they'll be left out in the cold if, uh, if it's no longer a thrust area of American policy. Chandra Bhushan, your thoughts? How big a setback would America's pullout mean for this global effort, this global fight against climate change? Uh, uh. I'm told we're trying to reconnect with him, but uh, Richard, the bigger question then with moves like this, is Donald Trump pushing the U.S. towards global isolation? Well, we'll see what decision that uh, the Trump administration ultimately comes to. Uh, this today feels very much like we saw a few weeks ago uh, with NAFTA, where uh, there began to be rumors sprinkling that the United States would announce a unilateral withdrawal from NAFTA, and ultimately the president announced that instead of withdrawal, uh, they were going to use the formal process to reopen and uh, initiate uh, negotiations on some portions they felt could be, could be strengthened. So uh, I, I don't know that it's a done decision, per se, that the U.S. is going to withdraw. I, I don't think anybody can claim to have a lot of foresight and knowledge as to what the president is going to do. Um, but isolation, yeah, sure. Uh, I, I think, you know, this is only one example. I think withdrawal from TPP, uh, I think, uh, you know, in various other, other roles, you, you kind of see in the United States withdrawing. Uh, he's, he's, he's very much focused on what a small group of American voters that thought the United States had engaged itself far too significantly in the world. Uh, that's the group that brought him to office, and that's mm. the group that he's, uh, he's paying the most attention to. Chandra Bhushan, what does pulling out really involve? Because the EU chief said that that's not an option. The law is the law. You have to follow it. What are the legal and procedural uh, issues here? So, I think Richard has already said that there are three options. Uh, one is that he will move out of the UNFCCC or he will, there's a lock-in period for three years under the Paris Agreement. So he will wait for three years or try and renegotiate the Paris Agreement. So there are a number of options available. But I want to go back to the point that Richard made that the worst polluting part of the U.S. is behind U.S., which is not true. U.S. today produces more, force, more oil than Saudi Arabia and more gas than Russia. And it is investing hugely in fossil fuel like shale gas. So I see increase in emission in the U.S. and not reduction in emission. And therefore, if U.S. walks up, Right, we seem to be having network issues here, but uh, uh, Richard Rosso and uh, Chandra Bhushan, thank you very much, both of you, for joining us. We're waiting for that announcement. If it comes from U.S. President Donald Trump, uh, most reports saying that it's imminent that he is going to pull out of the Paris Accord 
we're looking at the sweeping implications. This is something that we'll keep focusing on here on uh, Gravitas and on Beyond. Still ahead on this show, Pakistan once again accused of orchestrating a terror attack, this time by the Afghans. We bring you the latest on the Kabul truck bombing that killed 90 and injured 300 people.